Hello everyone, Evil Dragon from the Pyra development team here. Uh, we just started our journey last week. We opened the development block. We have the first PCB shown to the public at the Fosdam. And you were going to take part in our journey through the full development of the Pyra. And for that I'm going to explain what we've done already, what we've shown at the Fosdam, how the PCB works and what our current plans and hardware design are. This is the Pyra main development PCB. You can see four rows of keys here. LEDs for the uh, backlight of the keyboard, buttons, D-pad as usual, uh, two analog nubs with stick click. These are the new ones already. Two shoulder buttons on this side, two shoulder buttons on the other side. Then there's uh, two SD card slots, SIM card slot. Um, this is where the UMTS 3G module will be, which is optional. Um, it's not on my PCB, but it's already on the one the designer has and it's also been fully working. Then we've got the volume wheel here, the analog one, space for the Wi-Fi module. A lot of ports here which are not final yet. And this is the area where the SOC will be populated too. So basically this PCB has everything on there except for the um, processor. Um, it's a different approach from uh, the way you usually design electronics um, because this way we can just use simple two-layer PCB so that's a cheap one which can be produced within a couple of days. Uh, we don't have to populate the expensive SOC on there already and we can test all components up front. So um, we can still even change the SOC. Uh, you might have seen the thread at the boards about that, uh, a lot going on there, but we will come to that later. Um, so we can still change the SOC and test everything up front so that the full hardware will be working. And the last step will be to put the SOC onto that PCB as well. What I got here is the uh, development PCB from Texas Instruments for the OMAP 5, which is hidden below the heatsink. Um, it's got SATA, USB ports, um, SD card slot where we boot the operating system from, so Ethernet port. It is basically a complete miniature PC if you want to see, uh, say that. And uh, this is where we can test all the drivers and develop the software. Um, of course we need a way to connect our development Pyra PCB to it. So Texas Instruments was nice, well it's standard for development PCBs. On that port there are a lot of things like I2C buses and stuff like that. So we built our own um, connector PCB here, which plugs onto that one. And then this is not, a, not HDMI out, we were just using the connector. We can use that to connect it to uh, the Pyra PCB. And then basically we will only use the SOC, so the main CPU unit from this PCB. And the Pyra development PCB has all the components we want on there, like the keyboard controller, the nubs, uh, the UMTS module and Wi-Fi. And so we can easily test out everything up front without having to repopulate the complex stuff like the SOC each time. So let's connect it up. Here is how our current Pyra setup works. As mentioned, the OMAP PCB, the Pyra PCB connected with a simple cable. As mentioned, this is an HDMI cable, but it's not HDMI we are, um, we've connected here. These are I2C buses. Um, this is simply power for the PCB because uh, the drivers all need power and we don't get that out of the OMAP 5s. HDMI money connected with a monitor to it, well, and some power for the OMAP as well. Let's power it on. You can see now here with the LEDs, the PCB will start booting soon. Takes a while to read everything from the SD card, now it blinks, so it started reading from it. Now the Pyra PCB has been initialized. Um, this is just a very, well, funny testing sequence for all the LEDs blinking in various ways. Um, but during setup I've se um, changed them that they will be stable and not blink around, because that would have been pretty annoying at the uh, FOSDEM looking like a Christmas tree more than a PCB. So now it has the LEDs initialized. Uh, firmware is coming, here's the login screen. Um, what I've also used at the Fostem is a standard USB keyboard connected to um, the dev board. We could use the Pandora keyboard already, it is working, but we don't have a key mat and fiddling around on these buttons without a key map is uh, not really convenient. So. Let's log in here. 
um, I should use my correct login. Well, then it boot up, boots up KDE4. And you already seen a small sneak peek of what the system can do. Now, if you can see the mouse, I'm not sure. Yeah, there's, there's a very small mouse pointer. I can use the knobs already to move them around. As said, the keyboard would work as well and the LEDs are working. The LEDs can be set in user space, so they can be configured to anything you want. And, well, I will show you more of the operating system, but not uh, today. Well, it's just a standard Debian anyways right now. Um, this was just to show you today how the setup is and a pretty clever way to be able to test prototype PCBs uh, in a quick time and without using a lot of money and even being able to um, use another SOC in case a better one comes around. As said, see the thread or read the blog entry, I'm going to mention it here. And so basically everything has been done on the PCB. The hardware basically is working. So the last step uh, will be, but that will be a long last step because it's pretty complex and takes a lot of time to move the SOC onto the PCB as well. And then we are ready for some really um, real Pyra prototype without having the need to use the OMAP PCB.